Make meta. Okay. May all beings. Let us. Let us begin now, Meta. May all be be happy and secure. Ante, your mic is muted. Visible or invisible, living near or far, born or coming to birth. May all beings have happy minds. Let no one deceive another, nor despise anyone anywhere. Neither from anger nor ill will should anyone wish harm to another. As a mother would risk her own life to protect her only child, even so towards all living beings. One should cultivate a boundless heart. One should cultivate for all the world a heart of boundless loving friendliness, above, below, and all around, unobstructed, without head to rest, whether standing, walking, sitting, lying down, or whenever awake. One should develop this mindfulness. This is called divinely dwelling here not falling into erroneous views, but virtuous and endowed with vision, removing desire for sensual pleasures, one comes never again to birth in the womb. With this metta thought, let us begin our practice as usual. We <coughs> Focus our mind on our breath as we breathe in and out. We notice the breath touching our nostrils as we breathe in. As we breathe out, we notice our breath leaving our nostrils. And we notice as we breathe in our lungs expanding and our chest, abdomen, lower abdomen area is expanding. Uh, And then as we breathe out, abdominal area contracts the chest area contracts, the breath leaves our nostrils, and also we notice the feeling, perceptions, thoughts, and consciousness also change as we breathe in and out. They all rise and fall, always as we breathe in and out. So this is very important to remember. <clears throat> then our desire, our wanting to hold on to anything also fade away as we notice everything rising and falling. When that desire fades away, the body relaxes, the breath relaxes, mind relaxes, and then we notice in the relaxed state of mind, we feel metta more deeply because there is no rigidity uptightness. 
resentment. As the metta feeling increases, resentment will fade away. And then compassion arises. Naturally, when metta arises, along with metta, compassion arises. When compassion arises, restlessness and worry fade away. When these three things happen, if there is any sleepiness and drowsiness, that fade away. Sleepiness and drowsiness fade away when we are more active, energetic, and seeing the reality, we get more enthusiastic, alert. That time, sleepiness and drowsiness fade away. Now, these are the results of our own personal practice when we pay attention to our experiences. When all these things happen, we gain confidence in our own practice, in the Dhamma, in the Buddha who introduced the system. When confidence arises, doubt fades away, we feel joy seeing the results. When joy arises, it increases by degrees, and tranquility arises, pasaddi. When tranquility arises, it leads to happiness. Happiness arises, it leads to concentration. The Buddha said, happy mind leads to concentration, gains concentration. Sukhino Chittam Samadhyati. The one whose mind is happy gains concentration. When we gain concentration, we become even more agile, alert, sharp, and clear. In the clear state of mind, with the concentration, we see the subtlest changes taking place in us. Changes means impermanence. Whatever arises, passes away. Every second, every nanosecond, something arises in us, in our body, feeling, perceptions, thoughts, and consciousness. These are the five aggregates we have. They all are changing, rising and falling all the time. Only when we gain good concentration can we notice these changes, this rising and falling. Otherwise, we don't see them. Therefore, let us continue to stay in that concentrated state, noticing rising and falling, so that any notion, any slightest notion of permanent self will also disappear with the rising and falling, falling, seeing rising and falling. Let us continue this practice.
suffering be free from suffering. May the fear struck be free from fear. May the grieving be free, free, free from grief. So too may all beings be with this uh, metta thought in mind. Let us focus our mind on the talk that I'm going to give you now, then we have uh, we have been talking on Mahasatipatthana Sutta and uh, today we want to focus the mind on uh, uh, Sankhara. Those who have been attending our class from the beginning, I'm sure have uh, studied Sankhara to some extent. Today we are talking about the way how we use the Sankharas as uh, Dhamma Anupasana, uh, how you use it uh, as uh, meditation object. Uh, according to the discourse, Buddha says, uh, Santangva Ajatang, uh, no, uh, what do you call Sankhara. It is Sankhara, this. Uh, these are uh, sankharas. Here, sankhara is used for volitional formations. Although sankhara is used for many things, uh, in this discourse, in this particular place, Buddha used the word sankhara for volitional formations. We understand what volitional formations are. Volitional formations are, they arise, they are uh, what we call kamas, chetana. And these uh, uh, volitions we recognize as volition. Uh, they are uh, Rupa Sanchetana, Sadha Sanchetana, Gandha Sanchetana, Rasa Sanchetana, Potabha Sanchetana. Sanchetana means thoughts, volitional formations. When we see a form with our eyes, thought arises in our mind. That thought is called Rupa Sanchetana. When we hear a sound, a thought arises in our mind. That is Sadha Sanchetana. Similarly, when we hear, when we have a smell, taste, touch, and thought, in these six places, six times, sankhara or uh, volitional formations arise. And they are called kamas, chetana, don't arise by themselves without any, anything else. So first we recognize thoughts. These, these are uh, volitions. 
such uh, volitional formations, such they are arising, and such they are passing away. When we see such they are arising, first we recognize volitional formation. They can arise uh, while we are sitting, standing, walking, lying down, and whenever awake, uh, we can have these, they arise in our mind. Uh, when we hear a sound, a smell, and so on, these thoughts arise in our mind. Then we have to see, in the first place, uh, we also want to know, uh, why are they called uh, uh, Chetana? or oh, why are called Sankaras. Uh, Buddha has uh, defined uh, Sankaras in uh, uh, Sanyutta Nikaya, and he asked monks, why because do you call them volitional formations? They construct conditioned because therefore they are called volitional formations. They construct, construct, uh, uh, build up, accumulate, collect, or uh, repair, uh, prepare for repairing, preparing, collecting, all these for these meanings, the word Sankhar is used. In fact, I think the other day I mentioned <coughs> Sankhar is untranslatable into any language because it is very deep, profound uh, meaning. It has deep meaning. It also com uh, complex situation. Many things uh, can be called uh, Sankara. Uh, he said, so the Buddha said, uh, uh, why they call Sankara? And Buddha said, uh, they construct the conditioned because therefore they are called volitional formations. They, they construct the conditioned. What is already conditioned, they uh, recondition, uh, refurbish, uh, repair, and therefore it is called volitional formations. In this particular case, Buddha wanted, Buddha mentioned uh, construct conditioned Construct means build up, build up the thought, thought that already arises or arisen will be in, increased by further thinking. That is called uh, vitaka vichara. They are all additional things. Once we uh, saw a uh, an object, uh, then uh, we take the signs, nimittagahi hoti. We take the major signs of the object, minor signs of the object. Each time, each sign we focus our mind on, more thoughts arise in our mind. More thoughts about that particular thing arises. And that is what is called uh, construct, build up more and more thoughts in that particular, on, depending on that particular thought. Minor signs, major sign, nimitta gai hoti, bhyanjana gai hoti, anunimitta, sub minor signs, major signs, minor signs of that object. Uh, it may be a, a picture 
or a person, an animal, a place, and so forth and so on. We keep building up more and more and more thoughts depending on that particular object. That is, these additional things that we add to this original thought are called sankharas. Sankara already there, and more sankharas we add. So, <clears throat> uh, how do they construct? The Buddha defined again. They construct condition, uh, feeling as feeling. Once we felt something, we add more feeling uh, by thinking about it. It's beautiful, it is ugly, it is neutral, it is this, it is that. We add more and more additional uh, feelings. Uh, therefore, they are called sankharas. They construct condition perception as perception. Uh, when perception arises, the, we add more perceptions. So, uh, so when volition arises, we add more volitions. They construct condition consciousness as consciousness. Consciousness arises, and we add more consciousness. And therefore, they are called sankharas. Uh, in addition to other divisions of sankharas. And these sankharas, if you think how many of them can arise even in one day, let alone one day, in one hour, in one, uh, in half an hour, all this can arise as long as we remain unmindful. Even when we are mindful, we can see them arising. And therefore they are called sankharas. Uh, you can see this uh, description in Sangyutta Nikaya, uh, in uh, Khanda Sangyutta, uh, Khanda is about the five aggregates. Five aggregates is the right place to describe this because five aggregates, one of the aggregates is Sankara. Rupa, Vedana, Sanya, Sankara, Vijnana. So, uh, Sankara is described in that discourse called Khajjaniya Sutta. I also remember some times ago, I gave a talk on Khajjaniya. Khajjaniya means uh, uh, devouring. Uh, we, we are devoured, we, we are swallowed by these aggregates, these five aggregates. Always <coughs> they, uh, they, they consume us, and therefore they are called uh, Khajjaniya. And this course is called Khajjaniya Sutta in uh, Sangati Nikaya number uh, 22. Uh, you can see this uh, description. So, Sankharas, uh, we mentioned earlier, uh, Kaya Sankara, Chitta Sankara, Vachi Sankara. Uh, Kaya Sankara, we mentioned as uh, Inhaling, exhaling. Uh, sankara means conditioner. Uh, Vachi Sankara is Vitakka Vichara. Uh, thought and deliberation. Uh, Chitta Sankara means Sanya Vedana, feeling and perception. They also arise and they, they, as they arise we, we, we rebuild, in, increase their uh, in their uh, quantity, the quality, the number, we increase. <coughs> and Sankara especially is used uh, for uh, uh, the things that we carry in our Sangsara journey, the 
I call uh, our backpack uh, for the sankhara journey is sankhara. Sankhara is a journey. Sankhara is the backpack. We put more things into the backpack. More things are in the backpack longer the journey. So uh, remember this <coughs> simile. Uh, sankhara is. Uh, volitional formations and volitional formations are also uh, three types they are <coughs> the collections collecting collecting abhisankara abhisankata uh, so uh, abhisankarana means uh, collection pali word uh, sankatang abhisankaroti iti sankara abhisankarana means collecting uh, we collect uh, three kind of uh, uh, volitional formations. One is called Punyabi Sankara, other is called Apunyabi Sankara, the third is called Ananjabi Sankara. Punyabi Sankara means collecting merits. We collect merits to keep on going on in Sankara, to be born. Uh, as uh, uh, human beings, animals, divine beings, brahmas, or even uh, other beings. <coughs> they are called punyabi sankara, a collection of meritorious volition, meritorious volition. A punyabi sankara means collecting of demeritorious volition. We call pāp, akusala, unwholesome. Unwholesome, meritorious will, volition we collect. When we collect unwholesome volitional formations, we take re rebirth in a, a woeful state of vaccination, animal kingdom, and ghost and goblin, and demigods called asura, naraka, pareta, tirisang, asura. These are the four kind of uh, woeful state of existence. When we collect uh, uh, akusala, uh, apunya, uh, they are called apunya abhisankara, uh, that is what happened. When we collect punya abhisankara, when we collect uh, wholesome uh, um, punya, then we will be reborn in human level. A divine world, even Brahma world, uh, and keep uh, using our collected, accumulated uh, volition, karma, that as a result. And then, <coughs> a third uh, volitional formation she is called Ananja Abhisankara. Ananja Abhisankara. So, Ananja means unshakable. Unshakable. Uh, wholesome uh, karma, unshakable wholesome karma are uh, when we practice meditation, attain jhanas, we will, we will uh, gain uh, also they are wholesome, uh, wholesome karmas, but they have, uh, they are steadier than uh, other wholesome karmas. And uh, one can, uh, whenever we commit other wholesome karmas, we, our mind uh, does not stay uh, very steadily. But when we commit uh, ananja karma, ananja means unshakable. When we commit ananja karma through the practice of meditation, attain jhanas. When we attain jhanas, you can stay in jhanic state for long period of time uh, and when you when you die you also will be reborn in a realm called brahma realms so it uh, it is a, a long lasting benefit once a person is born according to buddhist cosmology if one were born in uh, as a uh, divine being, uh, that can that person will 
have certain lifespan limit. But when they practice jhana, you you don't have to practice jhana to go to divine beings. Only when you pra, pra, when you practice jhana, you can go to Brahma ones, Brahma worlds, uh, and then once you bo- are born in Brahma worlds, uh, you your lifespan is many many eons. Therefore, that is steadier than other uh, volitional formations. However, even that state of uh, divine uh, Brahma realm is not something permanent. That is the catch. Even that state is not permanent. And therefore, when you practice meditation, you not only have to see what the volitional formations are, how they arise, and then we have to see how they pass away. Uh, that is what the, the discourse says. Such are volitional formations, such they are arising, origin, such they are passing away. You see the origin of uh, volitional formations and how such are the passing away. The passing away is uh, some uh, nirodha. Uh, we mentioned there uh, 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 earlier Atthangama. <coughs> Atthangama means, uh, in other words, for uh, cessation, uh, disappearing. Now, Atthangama uh, or Nirodha are two types. One is Uppada Nirodha, other is Anuppada Nirodha. When we commit volitional formations, they, as they, they arise and soon they pass away. For instance, uh, even volitional formations are impermanent. Uh, when uh, volitional formations arise, that means thought arise, they don't stay forever. They pass away. Another thought arises. That passes away. Another thought, wholesome. Another wholesome thought arises. That passes away. Another unwholesome thought arises. That passes away. And uh, another imperturbable or unshakable thought arises. Jhana like that. That also passes away. Because jhanas are not something permanent. So you can see them arising and passing away. And that is called Uppada Nirodha. You see them arising and passing away all the time. The wholesome thought, unwholesome thought, uh, unshakable or imperturbable thought arise and pass away. But imperturbable thought, since the hindrances are subsided, no longer hindrances will be there during that time. You can stay in uh, imperturbable state longer. When we commit other wholesome thoughts, uh, hindrances are not subsided. Uh, needless to say about uh, unwholesome thought. Anyway, therefore, since 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 we have been, we will be able to suspend hindrances, five hindrances, kama chanda vyapada tina meddu uddha chukuchu vishiki chadi these are the five hindrances. When these hindrances subside, the mind can stay on the concentrated state longer time. And therefore that is called, uh, uh, what do you call, unshakable. And yet, they too pass away. And this is therefore called Uppada Nirodha. The Sankaras arise like anything else and then pass away. Anuppada Nirodha means when you attain enlightenment and pass away as an Arahant, then you will not be 
born again, and therefore that is called cessation for ever. So, uh, this is a very brief account of uh, how we use this uh, uh, practice. Now, this we <coughs> uh, use as a mind object, mind object. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, when we uh, see, hear, smell, taste, and so forth, when all these uh, uh, objects of our senses, sensory objects, uh, arise, uh, at that time they are sight is sight, sight is sight, uh, sound is sound, but when they uh, they subsided, ceased, uh, the mind can recall them. When mind recall them, then they will become um, mind objects. That is why the volitional formations, uh, volitional formations are used here as dumb object. Or, in this case, the, what we call five aggregates. Uh, five aggregates becomes dhamma or mind objects only when uh, we, are, we close our eyes, ears and so forth. When we recall, when we remember the sight that we saw, the sound we heard and so forth, when we recall, although the sound is no longer there, Sight is no longer there, taste, smell, and so forth are not there, and yet it is possible for us to remember them. That when we remember them, that time they all become mind objects, all become mind objects. And therefore, uh, when we use the five aggregates uh, as uh, mind objects, this is how we use them as mind objects, by recalling them. For instance, right now, you may see your body, but when you close your eyes, you cannot see the body, but you remember your body. And that time, your body itself becomes your mind object. You hear your own sound, voice, when you talk, but when you stop your talk, you still remember your voice. Uh, similarly, uh, smell, t uh, taste, touch, you have tasted delicious food, but after eating, the food is, the taste is not there. But you can recall the taste. That is why you want to have the same food again, or not to, not to have the same food again, and so forth. Your uh, memory becomes your mind, memory of uh, sight, sound, smell, taste, touch, and all this, uh, you can remember, those memories are your mind objects. And there you can see them arising. For instance, as soon as the, uh, the, the t taste of something arises, you remember the, the, the tongue, the kind of food, uh, the, its aroma uh, and how you enjoyed it, all this in, uh, add up. And all these additional things you remember are called sankharas, volitional formations. According to that, you behave. If it is <coughs> naturally, more, all these volitional formations have underlying tendencies. If it is very uh, pleasant, Greed is there naturally. If it is unpleasant, resentment is there. Uh, if it is neutral, confusion is there. Whenever you have something, whenever volition arises with greed, hatred, and delusion, that turns into unwholesome karma. When uh, volition arises without greed, hatred, and delusion, that becomes your wholesome karma. This wholesome karma, unwholesome karma is another name for uh, sankharas. So, you, you, you are the 
one who tests yourself. You don't see any of these things in books. Don't try to see any taste in a book, any smell in a book, any uh, thought in a book. You will see all this happening to you, within you. All you have to do is to pay attention to them and see how they arise, how they pass away. With this friend, I want to conclude this boarding session and uh, <coughs> uh, want to continue my uh, metta uh, wish as we do every day. Uh, may all those who are suffering from this COVID-19 and other diseases may recover very soon and uh, continue their normal life to live long and understand them and liberate themselves from suffering forever. There are people who have lost their very dear friends and relatives and uh, they may be grieving. Uh, I hope they all Re return to normal health, normal state, free from grief, and wish them peace and happiness, live long in very good health, to continue the practice of Dhamma and liberate themselves from samsara. There are many doctors, hosp nurses, hospital st staffs supporting, helping, dedicating their own lives uh, risking their own life to support these people. May they continue their very wonderful, generous uh, support, compassionate support, uh, without being themselves affected by any of this virus, and live long in good health. There are many generous people who uh, contribute their own wealth in many ways to support these projects, places, individuals, and let them continue their generosity with compassion and live long in very good health. And there are some leaders in the world who have done a wonderful job. May they continue, to continue their noble service and whatever they have done to help people continue their support. And there are some others who are still trying to help people in their own way, let them continue their service and uh, may they be uh, patient, may they have courage, understanding, determination and wisdom to make right decision to help the world to overcome this COVID-19. Thank you very much for listening and continue your participation. Thank you. Thank you, Pray. 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 Thank you, Pray.